Well, the uh, I guess let's start with the downside risk. As, as many Fed officials have said, including Jay Powell, if, as long as people don't feel confident about going out and really going to a store, I feel pretty okay. I'm okay social distancing and wearing a mask and all that. I know people who aren't. Uh, or and, and even more so, like going to a game, going to a restaurant, or going to work because they're not afraid, you know, they're afraid they won't be safe enough. Uh, that's going to hold the economy back. But uh, in some kind of ideal world, in fact, he's even said, I think he said it again this week, that it, with all that money we're spending, billions if not trillions, why not take millions or even billions and, and invest it in the technologies, for example, something where you could just be on your way to a football game and get tested and we'd know if you had COVID-19 or not, right? So I think those are sort of the two extremes. And I think that's why he says how we handle this is so important. Because we've seen some of the, you know, some of the recovery. He called the bottom in May. Right. Um, and even before we got these data. But I think that's what's so, so, so important to him. Kathleen, I love that that's the snippet that you chose to play here for us. Because I think if there's any consistent message from leaders in this world is that until you get the virus under control, you're just not going to have that safety security measure out there in the economy. And whatever you need to do to make people feel confident, I mean, it's it's that simple. It's not simple getting there, but it's that simple that that has to be the focal point. And, you know, we've talked with some pretty smart officials, too. And, you know, this whole idea that you kind of almost need a military effort, you know, talk about a war. We did talk about this being a war, the virus, but you really need a coordinated, you know, kind of almost military-like um, reaction to it to to get this under control and to make sure that you know you're putting all the systems in place, the technology, whatever it is, the medicine um, to get control of it. Well, and I think it's also another point they make along those lines is that it isn't just the generals and the colonels and corporals who count. It's every soldier on the ground, right? Every person by social distancing, wearing their mask and washing their hands all the time, can make a huge difference. And I think one of the trickiest things for many people is the workplace. Uh, you, you know, and you, you, can go to, you can go to Bloomberg, you can go to J.P. Morgan, you can go to a manufacturing plant, and even just the most basic level there of figuring out what are the simple, safe things you can do so people can go back to work. And even if it's not quite full force, right, at least getting partly there, seems to me that, that that's part of the message, too. Um, we Treatments, that's important. Vaccine maybe takes a while. And then there's just, you know, I think one thing everybody should realize is these these uh, these these kinds of viruses tend to have basically sort of a two year cycle, and we hope we can get it under control before two years because they tend to die down. SARS did, MERS did, but uh, there is, regardless of what happens, this is not going to be with us forever. It's just that right now, what we can do to help the people who are out of work and to help small businesses rebuild, or you know what I mean, or, or move on to something else if their business has been so beaten up that they can't even do that again. That's what's important in, in June, right now. Most important thing that you've heard from uh, Chair Powell? Well, you know, um, when he said uh, that, and I think it's tough, right? He's a chairman of the Fed. He does not want to get politicized, whatever he thinks himself personally about what the Republicans, Democrats, and Congress should do. He said giving, right now he does think, more support for people recently unemployed and, again, for small businesses is probably a good idea because the economy is starting to recover. And now, but it's not recovered enough for everybody to get jobs right away. And in order to feed the recovery and also just to take care of people who, it's like a natural disaster. You know, it isn't because you messed up and you lost your job, Right. It's a natural disaster, like a tsunami or, or something that just knocks everything down. We have to support those people in the meantime. I think him taking that very strong but very subtle step, making that statement, is probably important to the people in, co- in Congress right now who are arguing some kind of further steps. Maybe we have to modify the, the checks that go out, right? Maybe we have yeah. to modify who gets it and who doesn't. That's important, and Rob Kaplan has made that point recently as well. But uh, I think that was that was probably the strongest thing that, that Jay Powell said today. Yeah, I am also a little concerned that people are getting you know worried that people are going to get a little bit more money in these checks, and that's why they're staying home because I think that's not necessarily yeah. the right focal point. It's a, it's about let's just 
make sure everybody's being taken care of so that yeah. people do the right thing on a health care level. And that ultimately will help us get closer to reopening the economy sooner rather than later. Um, Kathleen, thank you so much. Congratulations. Um, good conversation with Robert Kaplan of the Dallas Fed. So I'm so glad we could uh, share that with you. Yeah, and, and I and think that audience. that point, just going right back to, to that little bit of sound that we played, that this is ultimately about managing the health crisis. I, I feel totally. like we're losing a little bit of that focus. Because we heard uh, that a lot, I feel like, in our conversations early on. And yeah. I do think, I, I feel like there's a little bit more pressure to kind of reopen, get it going, and yeah. then every once in a while someone's like, uh, folks, let's not forget, we're still in a health care crisis. Yeah, big time, big time. And I think it's especially hard to ignore that when you are looking at the headlines day to day, the state by state headlines, especially when you think about Florida, Texas, yeah. now California. Um, you think about New York City going to phase two reopening and sort of bracing ourselves. You think about what the impact is going to be from all those people out protesting. Uh, there's a lot to get our heads around. All right. Let's get down to Washington World and National Headlines with Nancy Lyons. Hey, Nancy. Hey there, Jason. Senate Republicans are promising quick action on their newly drafted police reform bill. Bloomberg Zerf Chapman reports leaders plan to bring it to the floor as early as next week. The bill presented by the only African-American Republican Senator Tim Scott would require reporting of violent incidents, create a commission to recommend more explicit measures, and improve police training. We can train our officers better to de-escalate situations, and not standing there watching an officer with his knee on the neck, but intervening in those situations. House Democrats are introducing their own bill that would, among other things, make it easier to prosecute or sue police officers who overuse force. In Washington, Irv Chapman, Bloomberg Radio. It was five years ago today, a 21-year-old self-declared white supremacist, Dylan Roof, entered Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina, and opened fire on the black congregants who were assembled for Bible study. Nine people were killed. Tonight, a video tribute to the victims will be posted on the church's Facebook page and YouTube channel, followed by a March for Justice on Sunday. South Carolina remains one of only four states without a hate crime bill on the books. Well, it's a 130-year brand. And to my pancakes. Quaker Oats says it's changing the name and image of the syrup, saying the origins of Aunt Jemima are based on a racial stereotype. Quaker, a subsidiary of PepsiCo, says removing the image and name is part of an effort by the company to make progress toward racial equality. Global News, 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Nancy Lyons. Whether planes are landing or not. Look, some of these are not going to keep open. The coronavirus crisis will reduce passenger numbers by half. Whether or not imports are arriving. Are you revising your estimates upwards now? We're still focused on Europe. Prime Minister Boris Johnson is urging consumers to go out and shop. Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Haven't you guys missed the boat? Weekdays at 1 a.m. Eastern on Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business app, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting A Teenager Learning the Lingo Jelly Jelly adjective Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same Visit AdoptUSKids.org Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services AdoptUSKids and the Ad Council it's a stock market driver. Now they're starting to see a little bit of panic from policymakers. It's a global political force. How will this epidemic reshape it? big tech and its relationship with Washington? It's a virus. This coronavirus is a global pandemic. Is there a safe haven? And the facts matter. The situation is so bad because of the virus that that is simply unavoidable. Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business App, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. 
economics. All this doom and gloom was out there. This is a message from the government about the next stage of controlling coronavirus with NHS Test and Trace. To protect your friends and family, testing and tracing must become a new way of life. If you have symptoms, you need to get a test immediately. Don't leave home for any other reason. If you test positive, we will contact you to trace people who you might have infected. From now on, if you're told you've been exposed to an infected person, you must self-isolate for 14 days. Play your part and do the right thing so we can safely return to a more normal life. Go to nhs.uk or call 119. Stay alert. Control the virus. Save lives. And action. I was offered one. Cut. That's not on the script. I was offered one. Get you. Ladies and gentlemen, I was offered one. Come, boy. I was offered one. Don't say can't work for it. Nine out of ten people said they were offered a great value deal with O2. Get yours today, in-store, online, or by phone. I was offered one, too. O2 Retail Exit Survey 309 of 348 agreed with the statement. O2 offered me a great value deal. For full verification, see o2.co.uk forward slash terms. What if the world listened more? Maybe it could become a better place. Because when we really listen, we start to notice things. Things that don't sound quite right. They might not seem obvious at first, but listen closely and they stand out like a sore plum. And the more we glisten, the door we learn. Our ears help us find belter solutions. And things can change from this to something a little more like this. The new Honda Jazz is a hybrid. Honda, the power of dreams. If you want to find out what the best laptop is for streaming all your favorite box sets back to back while sitting in your garden, you could ask an algorithm, or someone called Al, or Sue, or Sanjay, or one of our other tech experts on Shop Live, Curry's PC World's online video call experience. Hi, you're talking to Ali on Shop Live. Isn't it nice to get advice from another human being? They're just a click away. Curry's PC World. Talk to our tech experts online with Shop Live. Picture this. Small businesses on eBay are working to... Get things moving. Sending spices to novice cooks. Airbags to kids. Desks for home offices. Delivering the goods. Shipping footballs. Fruit trees. And dishwashers. Thousands of small businesses on eBay are helping to keep the nation going. They are individually brilliant, stronger as one. Buy, sell, eBay. Thanks to National Lottery Players, South Denbyshire Community Partnership are now delivering hot wheels to elderly people in the community like Bob and Sarah. Thank, Thank you. you. And £600 million of National Lottery funding is on its way to thousands more local projects across the UK during these exceptional times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The National Lottery. Your numbers make amazing happen. At Asda, we're helping you shop safely by keeping our stores clean and limiting customer numbers so you can keep two metres apart. With our Scan and Go mobile app, you can reduce contact at the till too. Asda, we're all in this together. Subject to availability, mobile data charges may apply. You love TuneIn for live breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on demand news shows on TuneIn. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. The Dow's given up earlier gains on the minus side. S&P just fading into the red. Right now, we've got NASDAQ holding on to gains, but let's get all the details as we head right over to the first word breaking news desk for today's afternoon call. Here he is, Bill Maloney. And good afternoon, Charlie. That's right. U.S. stocks trading mixed right now with the Dow down 78 points. S&P's dropped two. NASDAQ is higher by 43. The U.S. 10-year-old at 0.73%. Gold is trading little changed. And transports gain 31 points. Leaders to the upside in the Dow, Intel, Home Depot, and Visa, while ExxonMobil and Chevron led to the downside. After earnings, Oracle fell 5%. And in other news, Hertz suspended plans to sell 
$500 million in stock on the SEC review. And Cinemark plans to reopen all U.S. theaters by July 17th. On the geopolitical front, Lighthizer said the U.S. has made very little headway with the European Union on a deal. And the Washington Post report that John Bolton said that Trump asked China's Xi for re-election help. Wrapping things up, ABM Industries reports after the bell. Live from the First Republican News Desk, I'm Bill Maloney. Charlie? Hey, we thank you very much, Bill, and to hear live breaking news over your Bloomberg Time Squawk SQUAWK on your terminal. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie, thank you so much. You are listening to Bloomberg Business Week. Jason Kelly and Carol Masser right here with you on a Wednesday afternoon. It's time for Bloomberg Green. That's brought to you by PGM, the investment management business of Prudential. Find out how PGM stands by the clients and communities they serve around the world. Visit PGIM.com. So in our weekly Bloomberg Green segment, Jason Kelly, we're going to take a look at the green-eyed investors who are starting to reposition for the post-pandemic future. It begs the question, who will profit the most from a green recovery? So let's get into it with Emily Chasen. She's sustainability editor at Bloomberg News. She joins us on the phone in New York City. I stole your words because they were good ones. Um, And (laughs) she joins us. Oh, actually, are you not in New York? No, I'm in Philadelphia today. You're in Philadelphia. Okay. I know everybody's been moving around a little bit in part of our news organization. So tell us about this because I think this is, you know, Jason and I are talking a lot about how, you know, ultimately so many things and the way you get things to change is often kind of follow the money or with some kind of financial incentive. And I do wonder, you know, this has certainly played out in the green world as well. Yeah, well, it's been an interesting two weeks in the green world where there's been a lot more talk about racial justice and environmental justice. And um, there's a lot of connections, I guess, between like where a power plant is and how that air pollution affects communities of color that are close to that. And lots of questions about, you know, if we do this green recovery, if we're able to get to that point where we're building sort of a new economy and building back better, you know, who is going to be able to participate in that and how is it going to be equal? Because there are... um, There's so many investors that are going really fast into the space, but Uh there's people who are, you know, maybe going to be left out again. And do we want to have the same model that repeats that history if we're building a new kind of economic structure in the future? So we do want people to read your story, of course, but, you know, give us a taste of it. Who who is going to win? Who's going to make some money here? Yeah, well, you know, investors already have made a ton of money in the green stocks that were, you know, thriving at the end of the year. They felt like this last little bit was a buying opportunity. So people have gone back into companies like Tesla and Enphase and, you know, green funds have been performing really well coming out of this. And there's a ton of investors that are saying, okay, well, I'm still going to go ahead and launch my green infrastructure fund and I'm going to um, invest in that. The thesis still holds and they're just going like gangbusters. So the question is, when you build these new companies, what do they look like for the communities that are there um, and elsewhere? And so an option that some people are starting to talk about more is bringing back some of these profit-sharing models that existed in the 1980s when Ronald Reagan was president. Well, talk to us about them, exactly how they work and how that would be you know, a way of spreading around the wealth. Yeah, so profit sharing is, you know, not that common today anymore. You yeah. still find companies like General Motors or Ford where they have some sort of profit sharing arrangement with companies. But there are a few, like 6,000 companies that have some sort of employee stock ownership plan in them. Um, and Leo Strine just did a piece for Bloomberg Opinion. He's the former Delaware Chancery Court judge. Yeah. But he just did a piece for Bloomberg Opinion this week saying, you know, profit sharing might be a great way to improve equality and just sort of share the wealth a little bit better in the future. And there was actually just a study earlier this year on what green companies that do this profit sharing look like. And it found out that they were 21% scoring better on their sustainability assessments than companies that weren't employee-owned that were also green. That's so interesting. So I I guess, you know, one of the things I I did want to ask you, Emily, knowing that that you're joining us, you know, we've heard a lot of people talk about sort of ESG in in kind of a different lens over over the past few weeks and that, you know, the E has been getting a lot of attention. You know, there have been some people focused on the G, you know, sort of on the wonkier side of, you know, boards and how companies are run and executive compensation, things like that. But the S has certainly come sort of front and center. How does that all balance out? And, you, you know, you alluded to the idea that, you know, over the past few weeks, some of the climate and some of the more racial justice types 
type issues have been linked together rightly. Um, but but say a little bit more about how it all fits together. Yeah, well, it's really about who gets to own the clean energy future. You know, if you think about your solar panels on your roof, that's literally like power to the people, right? Like yeah. It's coming yeah. to your house and you can... Um, you own the power and you can sell it back to an electric company often and make some money from it. Um, Or decentralization is a big part of the economic future and there's a huge opportunity for um, more equal payment and economic incentive systems in that. So I think it is something that people are starting to think about as they go forward and say, well, who's going to own this future and how can we create a different economic structure under it if we're going to invest all this taxpayer money in it, if we're going to invest all this capital in it. Yeah, no, it's a re- that's a really interesting point, and and uh, I'm glad you pointed out how linked all this, all, all these things are, because it's important to think about. And as Carol said at the top, we know you got to follow the money to to understand this, and uh, you and your team do such a, ni- a nice job of that. Emily Jason, sustainability editor for Bloomberg, joining us on the phone from Pennsylvania. Her story: Who will profit the most from a green recovery? It it you know when I read the story, right. it was not exactly what I what thought I it thought was going to be. Yeah, yeah, it was good. No. Exactly. I'm with you as well. Right? But it's it's an interesting way of looking at it, especially against the context of kind of everything else that's going on in our world right now. Yeah. Well, right? and, and I feel like even before, you know, we really saw the last few weeks and all the protests around racial justice, we were talking a little bit more about the state of the worker. I remember the conversation we had um, with the former Volvo CEO, Per Yellenhammer. Boom. Pulled it out. Nice. Um, nailed it. Uh, and he talked a lot about you know, taking care of the blue collar worker. And I yes. think that that's a really interesting thing to keep. A priority. A priority. Yes, exactly. All right, coming up, Dave Wilson, his chart of the day. You're listening to Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Wall Street's gains are fading amid concerns about increases in coronavirus cases. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 68, the SP 500 down 1, the NASDAQ is up 50. Twitter is allowing some users to record and post their tweets as short audio clips, up to 140 seconds in length. The idea is to give people more space than Twitter's 280-character maximum. The voice tweets will roll out to iOS users in the coming weeks. Zoom is bending to pressure and will offer full end-to-end encryption to all users, free and paid. Although end-to-end encryption ensures privacy, it also means that participants can't call into a Zoom meeting by phone. Uber is getting into the software business. It's making the technology that powers its ride-hailing business available to others, starting with public transit agencies. Its first customers are transportation providers in California's Marin County. Larry Kofsky, Bloomberg Radio. To buy your home, you became a house hunting ace. Learned about loans, scoured neighborhoods, and asked the right questions. Now you're queen of your castle. If you manage that, you can get your retirement plan on track. Visiting aceyourretirement.org can help. With 401k tips and smart saving strategies, you'll feel empowered to own your retirement like you own your home. Go to aceyourretirement.org. Because when it comes to clearing financial hurdles, you're an ace. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. At Bloomberg, we know a lot of financial experts. He's a former president of the European Central Bank. Your global financial warriors is a classic textbook. A lot of political experts. If you were advising the president of the United States, what's the thing that he's not doing that he should do? And lucky for you, we know a lot of science experts, too. You talked about those reagents which are necessary for the testing. It's also the behavioral psychological approach. Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business App, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. This t- I was offered one. I was offered one. Who are you? Yeah, I was offered one who? One, two, one, two. I was offered one. I was offered one. Don't say can't work for it. Nine out of ten people said they were offered a great value deal with O2. Get yours today, in store, online, or by phone. I was offered one too. O2 Retail Exit Survey 309 of 348 agreed with the statement. O2 offered me a great value deal. For full verification, see o2.co.uk forward slash terms. At Honda, we believe in our ears. Listening can help solve some of life's biggest conundrums. For example, if a car breaks down and there's no one around to hear it, does it make a sound? The answer is... Yes. The new Jazz Hybrid will pinpoint your location automatically and send for help at the tap of a button. 
and with its personal assistant, you can find the answers to other conundrums like, where is a good vegan gluten-free pizza place with free parking? The new Honda Jazz. Hybrid and connected. Honda. The power of dreams. Connectivity subscription available in selected grades. TfL has a plan to help London reopen carefully, safely and sustainably. You can do your bit by continuing to work from home if you can and avoiding public transport. If you have to use public transport, you must now wear a face covering at all times, avoid peak hours and wash your hands before and after travel. For everyone's safety, we regularly clean our services with antiviral disinfectant and we'll be providing hand sanitizer across our network. For more information, search TfL's restart plan. To the Mayor of London and TfL, every journey matters. Buckle up, race fans. NASCAR is back in the driver's seat. And you can cut straight to the action here. With the Performance Racing Network on TuneIn, you can hear PRN's live coverage of some of this year's top events. As NASCAR's top drivers, Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer, and more get back on the track. Search Performance Racing Network to listen and see upcoming races. Stay close to College Hoops Conversation with College Basketball Talk podcast from NBC Sports. Join Rob Dowster and Bobby Reagan for weekly recaps of what's happening in every conference. Nostalgic flashbacks to classic games. And big picture discussions of the future of the sport. Always knew was a legend, and you always knew was one of the great coaches because everyone always told you how great this coach was. But he never really reached point of either. Search College Basketball Talk on TuneIn to listen. Let's be honest. We all spend too much of our day on social media. But at least you can spend your endless scroll time to discover new things on TuneIn. Follow at TuneIn on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to always be in the know about the best new stuff streaming in the app. From breaking news stories and live sporting events. Yeah, but it's unique times, I think, there's through unique circumstances, and uh, we're trying to... To stand out stations and podcasts, stay in touch with TuneIn. You love TuneIn for live breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on-demand news shows on TuneIn. Trey Wingo here from ESPN's Golick and Wingo. Every morning, Mike Golick, Mike Golick Jr., and I sit down to discuss all the news, drama, and highlights spinning the sports world that day. And with TuneIn, you can hear us whenever and wherever you go. Just search Gold and Wingo to start listening today. Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991. To Boston. Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco. Bloomberg 960. To the country. Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe. The Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Business Week. I hope it's a good song. That's all I'm going to say. It's going to be that, a great song. Well, it, they're always great, right? They're always good. Sometimes I'm doubting Dave Wilson. <laughs> I would never doubt Dave. I Wilson. just want to know if I it's going to so take you him. back to Nassau Coliseum. <laughs> That's you know, the real to, question. I have to message my brother and find out when that was and yeah. if it was. I forgot to do that. All right, we're going to get the chart of the day. It's a good one. It's a great one. In fact. I love it. Uh, but let's get back to your top business stories and to Charlie Pellet. Hey, Charlie. The happy Wednesday to you both. Want to begin with an update to the Hertz headlines we brought you a few minutes ago. Hertz Global Holdings suspending plans to raise cash by selling new shares that the bankrupt car renter had described as potentially worthless after its proposal face, uh, failed to pass muster with regulators. The company, according to a filing, has, quote, halted sales pending further understanding of the nature and timing of the regulatory review. Hertz shares, they're up now by about 9.7%. Twitter says it will let users record and post their tweets as short audio clips directly in the app, which other users can then listen to from their Twitter feed. Twitter shares, they're declining now by about 1.2%. The Aunt Jemima brand will be phased out. Uncle Ben's could follow suit as nationwide protests prompt a sudden corporate reckoning on racial inequality. Owner PepsiCo plans to change the name of its Aunt Jemima pancake mix and syrup, acknowledging that the 131-year-old brand is rooted in racial 
socially problematic tropes. As for PepsiCo shares, they are trading higher now. They're a little changed up less than one-tenth of one percent. It is a mixed market here. 27 minutes to go. We've got the Dow, the S&P both lower. NASDAQ is higher, holding on to an eight-point gain now, up by about one-tenth of one percent. But the Dow down 157 points, down six-tenths of one percent. S&P down nine, down three-tenths. We've got the 10-year up 6.30 seconds with a yield of 0.73 percent. Gold up a dollar 20 the ounce at 17.27, up by about one tenth of one percent. West Texas Intermediate crude down 1.6 percent, 37.78 a barrel. 3.33 on Wall Street. Time now for the small business report, and here's John Tucker. The second stage of New Jersey's reopening is underway. Across the state, outdoor dining is allowed with restrictions, and retail businesses are open for limited indoor shopping. But are the customers coming back? Well, it kind of depends. Angela Capadonna is co-owner of Hudson Cafe at the Jersey Shore. Angela, what kind of effect has the, the pandemic, first of all, had on your business? So usually during the winter, you know, we're pretty packed inside, especially on the weekends. Um, not really uh, that big of a to-go business. Uh, since the pandemic hit, we did not close. And we said we were going to go to strictly, you know, curbside pickup only. And that's uh, worked out for us. You know, we're at about 60% of what our previous business was, but it's still keeping us, you know, going. Now, outdoor dining is allowed to resume with restrictions in New Jersey. How is that going? We are just doing our still our curbside pickup only because we only have about four outside tables. Have you gotten any guidance as to when the indoor can open? Um, I just heard on the radio this morning that Governor Murphy said that, um, you know, we're, we might, instead of be months out from indoor dining, it might be weeks. So that's very exciting for us because, you know, we... We miss our customers. We miss seeing all the faces and stuff like that. Angela, thanks a lot. Angela Capadonna at the Hudson Cafe in New Jersey. Best of luck. And that is your Bloomberg Small Business Report. And John Tucker, we thank you. Fed Chair Jay Powell urging Congress not to remove fiscal support too fast. Again, recapping, equities trading mixed, S&P lower down five, down two-tenths of one percent. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie, thank you so much. You are listening to Bloomberg Business Week right here on Bloomberg Radio. Okay. I have seen her in concert at Radio City, and it was incredible. She is the queen of soul. She is. Yes. Yes. Did you guys see, um, Kelly Clarkson recently recently did something, too, online. Um, I can't remember what uh, Aretha song it was. Interesting. Well, that, I, yeah. I would say who's Just Zoom and who may not be... Um, My fave? Yeah. May, maybe not in the, in the top but, five. But who knew? Very appropriate. Yes. For today. It was a good song. Dave Wilson delivered for you. Yes, he did. And you know, well, anything- let's not forget that album also had Freeway of Love, oh, better known, and of course, with go. a sax solo from one Clarence Clemens. Oh, see? Well done, Dave. It all Thank comes back you. to the great state of New Jersey and its Bruce most famous resident after present company, Carol Masser and Dave Wilson. <laughs> that guy, Bruce Springsteen, and his band. Oh, what is it? The Z Street Band? The Zoom Street Band? I don't the know. The Zoom Street. In any case, uh, Zoom, General Electric. This is a great chart, Dave. Tell us about it. Well, yeah, I mean, the reason I picked the song is it's all about Zoom, you know, Zoom video communications, if you want to use the full name. You know, in the coronavirus pandemic, their video conferencing software has gone well beyond the original audience of, of business users. Uh, you know, families use it, uh, groups use you name it. I mean, it's all over the place. And what's happened because of that is this company has become a whole lot more valuable. And, you know, I saw this uh, comparison a couple days ago by Michael Batnick, who's the director of research over at Ritholtz uh, Wealth, Wealth Management, Barry Ritholtz's firm. And he was comparing the market value of Zoom to Goldman Sachs. It's getting close, but it's not really that close at this point. So I started looking around to try and figure out a comparison that would perhaps be more significant. And blow everyone's minds. Zoom. Thank you. As a higher market value than General Electric. That is just... Which nice. really is a mind blower. I mean, think yeah. about it. GE was once the biggest company in the world by market value. Now, a lot has changed over the years. 
And certainly this year, we've seen the coronavirus have an effect on its businesses, whether you think about jet engines or power turbines, a lot of their products just aren't in demand the way that they were. And, you know, medical equipment business are big in. Hospitals have other things to think about at this point uh, besides buying new gear. So when you put that all together, you've seen GE's market value drop 32% through yesterday, whereas Zoom's more than tripled. So here's how the numbers stacked up then. Zoom at $68.4 billion, GE at $65.3 billion. Now, actually, Zoom first crossed over GE a month ago, but just for a day. And, you know, this week it's been above there pretty consistently, so it seemed like the right time to highlight this particular comparison. If you want to know more, folks, send me an email. I'll get you the chart, the explanation that goes with it, and everything I do going forward. The email address is dwilson at bloomberg.net. That's D. Wilson at Bloomberg.net. I love this, right? It's just, and we will see, Dave, right, longer term, whether or not Zoom, everything that's happening now becomes kind of a fixture in our, in our yeah. world. Because you just, you just don't know. And whether or not it really kind of grows into that valuation. And, and here's a comparison for you, a quick one. Actually, a listener, John, pointed out to me. You've got Zoom trading at 1,300 times earnings. Yeah. Geez, a 15. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting and important comparison. Dave Wilson, thank you so much. We'll talk to you in a bit right after the close of trading. Thank you for the uh, read that. I kind of needed that. Yeah, that was a nice little boost. Nice little boost. Who's much Zoom and who? Uh, talked about Zoom actually with Jim Coulter. We're going to play a bit of that coming wow. up in a bit. That's Just tying it all together. All right. Uh, let's get down to D.C. Nancy Lyons is there for some world and national headlines. Hey, Nance. Hey, thanks, Jason. Former National Security Advisor John Bolton writes in his new book, President Trump asked Chinese President Xi Jinping to help him win the 2020 election. In summarizing the book, the Washington Post reports Trump asked Xi to increase agricultural purchases from American farmers, which would help his election chances. Bolton also writes the House should have investigated Trump not just for pressuring Ukraine to incriminate his political rivals, but for a variety of instances when he tried to intervene in law enforcement matters for political reasons in order to placate dictators. Well, President Trump is launching an effort to prevent veteran suicides. My administration is marshalling every resource to stop the crisis of veteran suicide and protect our nation's most treasured heroes. The $53 million two-year effort will include a public messaging campaign. Well, Senate Republicans are proposing changes to police procedures and accountability in what they're calling the Justice Act. It would establish an enhanced use of force database, would restrict chokeholds, require new police training, and set up commissions to study law enforcement and race. Senator Tim Scott, the lone black Republican senator, drafted the proposal. We're listening to your concerns. Uh, The George Floyd incident certainly accelerated this conversation, and we find ourselves at a place with a package that I think speaks to the families that I spoke with yesterday who lost loved ones. We hear you. Global News, 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Nancy Lyons. Jenny Liss, Jewish communal leader and philanthropist, talks about why she chose the Jewish Communal Fund for her family's charitable giving. For a lot of people, it would be the convenience factor. I don't have to track anything. If charitable giving is an important part of your life, JCF can help you organize your philanthropy with our donor-advised fund. A fund can be established with a minimum tax-deductible contribution of $5,000, make grants to your favorite charities, and JCF handles all the administration and reporting. At the year end, our board awards community grants from fees and endowment income to UJ's annual campaign. We also make gifts to specific organizations, the elderly, Holocaust survivors, the hungry. The fact that we come together as a community at the end of the year to build community, that's what makes us different. Get better at giving back. To find out more about JCF's impact, visit jcfny.org and download the giving report. JCF, we have a gift for giving. Hey, y'all, Jeff Foxworthy here. Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up, because there's a lot more to say. 
And I should know because my grandfather was a firefighter. And one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires, which means always BYOB. <laughs> no, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away, or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. COVID-19. Can the world reopen for... Listen. That's a dream. Everyone has them jingling away in the back of our minds. And most of the time, that's where dreams stay. So easy to ignore. Anything can drown them out and everything does. But at Honda, we listen to our dreams. We get right up close. And on really good days, they become reality. From 2022, Honda's mainstream cars will only be hybrid or electric. Honda, the power of dreams. When you buy tech online and you want to make sure you get exactly what you need, would you rather talk to an algorithm or to someone called Al or Derek or Sanjay or Sue or one of our other tech experts on Shop Live, Curry's PC World's online video call experience? Hey, I'm Ali. How can I help? Isn't it nice to get expert advice from another human being before you buy? They're just a click away. Curry's PC World. Talk to our tech experts online with Shop Live. Where will 2020 take you? Somewhere where people care about each other, about our planet, about creating a better world for everyone and becoming the best versions of yourselves. Join a community of like-minded individuals at the University of Winchester. Make sure to accept your offer by the UCAS deadline and visit our website to find out more. See the bigger picture. Be the difference. Go to winchester.ac.uk. TfL has a plan to help London reopen carefully, safely and sustainably. We're temporarily changing when 60 plus London Oyster photo cards, older person's freedom passes and English National Concession Scheme passes can be used. From the 15th of June, you will only be able to use these passes from 9am on weekday mornings. This is to protect those who must travel in the morning peak and allows you to travel at times when you can safely social distance from others. For more information, search TfL Restart Plan. To the Mayor of London and TfL, every journey matters. Get your cook on with Asta. With Uncle Ben's rice, 250 grams for just £1. And our butcher's selection chicken breast fillets, only £3.40 for 650 grams. Why not whack it in the wok? At Asta, we're committed to low prices every day on the quality products you need. Asta. Selected stores and lines subject to availability. With millions of podcasts dropping new episodes all the time, how do you keep up with all your favorites? Tune in makes it easy. Simply head to the home screen and find your new episode section to see the latest additions. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. Ready for a -a one-of-a-kind look at the NFL? On the PFF NFL Podcast, Steve Palazzolo and Sam Munson interpret the unique stats of pro football focus to analyze the league, uncover secret superstars, and discuss which teams to watch out for in the next Super Bowl. Let's talk some football. Let's do it, Steve. All sorts of stuff. We're going to do most improved defenses around the NFL. Solomon Wilcox, our very own. He went went into some detail over at PFF.com. Most improved defenses around the NFL. Search PFF NFL on TuneIn to listen. Up race fans. NASCAR is back in the driver's seat. And you can cut straight to the action here. With the Performance Racing Network on TuneIn, you can hear PRN's live coverage of some of this year's top events. As NASCAR's top drivers, Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer, and more get back on the track. Search Performance Racing Network to listen and see upcoming races. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business App, and on Quick Take by 
by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. 13 minutes to go ahead of the closing bell on this Wednesday. S&P 500 index in the red after a bolt and book details. The S&P now lower by 12, down four tenths of 1%. The Dow down 191 points, down seven tenths of 1%. NASDAQ holding on to a six point gain. It is up now by just about one tenth of 1%. The 10 year up 7.30 seconds with a yield of 0.72%. We've got gold up one tenth of 1%, 17.28 the ounce. Crude slumping 1.8%, now at 37.70 a barrel. So again, recapping the Dow, the S&P lower, NASDAQ higher, S&P down 13, a drop there of four tenths of 1%. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, All right Charlie. Charlie. Jinx. Jinx, 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 jinx. Jinx, jinx, jinx. Uh, Charlie Pellet with the Bloomberg Business Flash. He's so We're good. He deserves two trade. anchors taken him back. He does. That's all I'm just say. taking care of him, exactly. We just want him back in the office. He's happier when he's back in the office. He has proven that, and he said it repeatedly. <laughs> No, he's kind of, you know, the just happy guy. He well, he's sort around. of the mayor of Bloomberg. Yeah, he's totally I mean, the mayor. We have an actual well, mayor, yeah. but like, you know, yeah. like the, sorry, the other Mike. one. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Mike. He's just on the side. We just let him think he is. <laughs> yeah, we we'll um, let Charlie Bell think he's I do, the mayor. I do want to make, um, there's a headline crossing. President Trump signing legislation that would impose sanctions on Chinese officials over human rights abuses against um, Uyghur. I hope I'm saying it correctly. We- Uyghurs? Uyghur, Uyghur, thank you. I knew I had it wrong. Uyghur minorities. Um, this has been an issue. My daughter talks about it. You'd think I would have known because she talks about it a lot. Um, so anyway, we just wanted to pass that along. Uh, certainly our world in that. Folks yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and it's interesting to, to take a look at what folks are reading uh, here on the Bloomberg. You know, we're talking a lot about reopening. We're talking uh, candidly a lot about this new book that may be coming out, may, may not be coming out, Carol. Yeah, exactly. And I do say, you know, one of the most read stories on the Bloomberg comes from J.P. Morgan that is sounding warnings on market corrections at a 20, uh, market correlations, forgive me, at 20-year highs. They're watching how a lot of different assets seem to be trading together. Uh, whether it's convertible bonds, commodities, emerging market shares, they're all spiking and upending diversification strategies for investors, right? Which is typically what happens, right? Everything doesn't trade in tandem. So let's talk about uh, the market environment. Uh, we're just about 11 minutes away from that closing bell. Chris Heisey is with us, back with us, Managing Director, Chief Investment Officer for Bank of America, Private Bank, and Merrill on the phone in New York City. Chris, it is nice to have you back with us. Um, actually, I believe you're uh, on the phone in Connecticut. So talk to me about when you look at this market environment, uh, we're well off, certainly on the equity side of things, well off our lows. But it is interesting that J.P. Morgan story, you know, they're looking at different asset classes and there's a lot of market correlations, a lot of trades um, happening in tandem. Yeah, so I think this is emblematic of a market environment in which, first of all, the liquidity was the first phase of the workout process. And with hyper liquidity, once you get that stabilize, stabilization and that, and that low point like we had on March 23rd, uh, you look for signs that are confirming things. You look for signs in the economy and then ultimately in the market. And with that liquidity push, correlations tend to rise. And as correlations rise, you get that first phase, and that is the catch-up phase. And there's a lot of investors out of this market. Cash levels are very high, in some cases at record levels. And then next phase is more than likely the long-term money, particularly the asset management community, which is no longer getting redemptions, but are actually have to put some of that cash to work and participate in a market advance that we see unfolding between now and the end of the year. So what's going to trigger that next phase? You know, the next phase is, is an interesting one because we've gone from a shutdown to reopening, and now it's a reevaluation phase. Mm-hmm. What does that really mean? It means that we need to see confirmation in the broader economy, both the consumer and manufacturing, and then at the global level, we need to see global trade pick up. Uh, this will come in fits and starts. We've seen a lot of V-like shapes already across the board, but how high is that right tail of the V is the critical point to see whether or not that long-term asset management money actually starts to come back into the, in the market. We expect that, um, and it's because the narrative has changed. The narrative went from pricing in a long depression to pricing in a very difficult, shortest on, in history potentially, recession that is turning over into uh, a recovery. So when you take a look at some of the discussions happening right now, 
around things like big macro issues like trade still, right? It never seems to die down. We do know that um, U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthouser, he was up um, on Capitol Hill today uh, talking to the House Ways and Means Committee and talked about some different things. He talked about pulling out of the global digital tax talks. Um, you know, this is something that feels like it's constantly being talked about. And I think depending on whether or not we get another four years of President Trump and his team in the White House, you know, I feel like it will continue to be certainly a, a big area of discussion. How does that impact or play as a factor in the financial markets and investing uh, in your view, Chris? One of the greatest accelerants that we have seen coming out of the global pandemic and difficult period is that the acceleration of this dual supply chain world uh, is really just beginning. It's not going to be as easy as most people believe. Large corporations are stuck in long-term contracts. It's very difficult for operations to move within one year, let alone a few months. But certainly over the next few years, one of the big themes out there will not necessarily be complete deglobalization, but the but deglobalization leading to different supply chains controlled by domestic economies. And if that starts to happen, which we expect onshoring coming back into the United States, um, the regional economic zones of Europe, of Japan, of Asia driven by China, and the United States within North America are likely to be building these regional trade zones more or less than what we saw in, in many decades past, which is the global trade zone. And that will be key from the standpoint of negotiation. So it, it is absolutely critical now. It's actually going to get even more important in the couple of years ahead. Hmm. So what are you worried the most about? Well, first and foremost, it's, you know, science gets us back, gets us back, and maybe not to normal, but certainly to a new normal. And the human health care crisis, number one, is always top of mind. It will likely be that for the foreseeable future. Treatment and testing are critical there while we wait for vaccines. Number two would be the U.S. election risk, and that would be more about change, just general change. Markets don't like change if that were to occur. And then three, uh, we just touched on it, it's the What's the real relationship with the U.S. and China uh, for the next five to ten years? That would be those th- in that in that order. Those would be the biggest risks. So, in terms of then investment decision making right now, um, I mean, especially when you hear about a lot of people moving more and more into cash, I just do wonder, you know, what are some of the asset classes that you guys spend a lot of time talking about? You know what's interesting here is when, when, when the knee-jerk reaction is high cash levels, whether it's institutionally or the private client side, one believes that it's a move to risk off and it's a risk off move for a long period of time. What actually we see happening, uh, given the wealth that we manage, is this movement towards we've had a long run of a bull market previous to the virus. And there's a lot of locked up gains. They were taking off the table because many people were above their goals, whether it was retirement or something else. And now they need a new catalyst to come back into what still appears to be the great unknown. Um, So the asset classes we're watching for confirmation that the recovery is not just a small V, but eventually gets back to what we call the new normal, is uh, the cyclical areas. So Japan has been outperforming. Uh, Cyclicals have outperformed defensives. Uh, small caps are narrowing their great underperformance. High yield has been outperforming. But most importantly, these two are, are critical to this reflationary period. First is the yield curve, very mm-hmm. different today than it was pre-virus. We were worried about deflation. Right. Now we've got a steeper yield curve. Strong dollar was before, now a weaker dollar. Those are the two most important parts. All right, we're going to leave it on that note. Hey, Chris, great to check in with you. Uh, Chris Heisey, Managing Director, Chief Investment Officer at Bank of America Private Bank in Merrill, on the phone from Connecticut. And we've got equities, Jason, just off their lows. So, uh, but we've really bounced around a lot. Stick around, folks. We're going to take you down to that closing bell, take a look at some of the stocks and sectors on the move for the Wednesday trade. This is Bloomberg Radio. With a new day comes new COVID-19. At Honda, we've never looked to other car companies for inspiration. No, it's not a matter of an inflated ego. We just prefer listening to what people really need. For example, the new Honda Jazz Hybrid doesn't have the expected six airbags. It has ten, including one that prevents the driver and passenger from colliding with each other. And because we also listen to our conscience, all our safety features come as standard. No charge. Honda, the power of dreams. 
Where will 2020 take you? Somewhere where people care about each other, about our planet, about creating a better world for everyone and becoming the best versions of yourselves. Join a community of like-minded individuals at the University of Winchester. Make sure to accept your offer by the UCAS deadline and visit our website to find out more. See the bigger picture. Be the difference. Go to winchester.ac.uk. TfL has a plan to help London reopen carefully, safely and sustainably. You can do your bit by continuing to work from home if you can and avoiding public transport. If you have to use public transport, you must now wear a face covering at all times, avoid peak hours and wash your hands before and after travel. For everyone's safety, we regularly clean our services with antiviral disinfectant and we'll be providing hand sanitizer across our network. For more information, search TfL's restart plan. To the Mayor of London and TfL, every journey matters. Get your cook on with Asda. With Uncle Ben's rice, 250 grams for just £1. And our butcher's select and chicken breast fillets, only £3.40 for 650 grams. Why not whack it in the wok? At Asda, we're committed to low prices every day on the quality products you need. Asda. Selected stores and lines subject to availability. Hi, I'm an ad for Voxy, the mobile network that gives you endless social media without eating your data. Plus, there's no contracts so you can cancel any time. Get endless social media plus a whopping 12 gig for just £10 a month. What? Don't just sit there twiddling your thumbs. Get your SIM today at voxy.co.uk. Voxy, stay connected, stay endless. Offer ends 25th of June. Endless social requires 30 days rolling plan, some general data and does not include voice and video calls. 25 gigabytes roaming, fair use and terms apply. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. The world, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. Lines and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Plan. On Bloomberg World Headquarters. I'm Charlie Pellet. There you have it. Sound of the closing bell at the New York Stock Exchange. As you wrap up uh, trading on this Wednesday, turned out to be a mixed session. Do want to begin with a headline from the Bloomberg Professional Service. U.S. virus cases up 1.2% in line with the past week's average. Stocks lower for the first time in four days. Those worrying increases in coronavirus cases overtook optimism about stimulus measures. The benchmark S&P 500 index swung between gains and losses for most of the day before turning red late with the energy, real estate, financial sectors all leading the declines. Infectious incre- infections increased from China to Brazil. Iran warned it may need a, need a new lockdown. Texas reported a surge in hospitalizations. Here are the closing numbers. S&P down 11, a drop of four tenths of one percent. The Dow tumbled 170 points, close to the low of the day, down seven tenths of one percent. Nasdaq held on to a 14 point gain, up today by about two tenths of one percent. Tenure up 7.30 seconds with a yield of 0.72 percent. As for the market outlook, Chris Heise is chief investment officer at Bank of America Private Bank. Moments ago, here on Bloomberg Business Week, he told us he sees the advance continuing through the rest of the year. We've gone from shutdown to reopening, and now it's a reevaluation phase. Mm-hmm. What does that really mean? It means that we need to see confirmation in the broader economy, both the consumer and manufacturing, and then at the global level, we need to see global trade pick up. Uh, this will come in fits and starts. We've seen a lot of V-like shapes already across the board. Tough day for a lot of the cruise line names. So they declined after Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings extended a suspension of global cruising through the end of September, dashing the stock market's hopes for a return to service months after the COVID-19 pandemic shuttered the industry. Among some of the cruise names today, uh, we did see Norwegian down 8.4%, Royal Caribbean down 7.1%, Carnival down by 6.5%. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Nobody move a muscle. Damn, Shippy, you got to move. And I'm moving on, moving on from town to town. Time is money. Let's go. Come on, move it. Shake it up. Shake it up. Bloomberg Business Week. Movers and Shakers with Carol Messer and Jason.
Jason Kelly on Bloomberg Radio. All right, time to take a look at some of the stocks on the move. Charlie, giving you those closing numbers on Wall Street. And let me just take a look, a little bit of a deeper dive into the S&P 500. We had 154 names in the index higher today, 348 lower and three unchanged. And if I take a look, let me just pull it up for you. Uh, In terms of those major industry groups in the S&P 500, there are 11 of them. We did see, understandably, most of them down for the day. The only, and they barely eked out again call it unch- unchanged communication services consumer discretionary information technology just a hair uh, higher today but really unchanged bottom of the pack though jason financials were down 1.4 percent energy names were down about 3.3 percent yeah and it's interesting to look across you know some of the movers and shakers you know in the um in the positive column, you have Advanced Auto Parts and ATVI, which is, of course, Activision Blizzard. So you're like, uh, okay, so auto parts and video games? Uh, you know, you had, I think in the case of Advanced Auto, you had one of their their CEO buying some shares. So that's obviously a bullish uh, take. It's and insider buying, right? Yeah. Exactly. And in the case of ATVI, I believe that was, let's see, um, you know, it's hard to see. So there's nothing really uh, so clear. I mean, the the fact of the matter is, is we know some of those video game makers, given what people are doing. We talked about Zoom earlier. People are at home. Yeah. Playing more games. Yeah. They're doing all sorts of... It's up 27% of Activision this yeah, year. This year. Right. Yeah. So yeah. on the other side, you know, you had a couple of names very familiar to us, more on the downside than the upside, uh, NCLH, Norwegian Cruise Lines, and Royal Caribbean, RCL, down again. Yeah. Well, and, you know, to hear what Charlie said, I mean... You know, I think as as a lot of industries start to reopen and they realize what's involved or how do they do it safely, it's not so easy. And for the cruise industry, I just have to say, I think it's going to take a while. I think I think folks are not going to feel safe. We know the stories. I think ultimately people will get back on ships, no doubt about it. That's just the way the world works. Yeah, uh, and people are pretty resilient. But that whole, you know, it's a healthcare crisis. Got to deal with that, and you got to make people feel safe. That's how you you reopen, especially in those congested areas, whether it's a cruise ship or whether it's a major city. Right. Well, and we also know we've heard this repeatedly from whether it's the CEO of Kayak who we spoke to recently, whether it's other folks like uh, the CEO of Travago who we've also spoken with. People are going to stay closer to home. They're going to drive yeah. to. Yeah. I think people are still going to go on vacation. If I had to guess, right now, uh, it feels like people are going to get away. I have some friends, you know, from around here who they're going to the beach this weekend. You know, renting a house, doing that, right? Open air, all of that. I, I right. think you're going to see some of that. I think. But so in too. terms of like, yeah, I'm going to get on a boat for 14 days. I mean, come on, come on, man. Come on, man. What are you, Joe Biden? Come on, man. Uh, Zoom. I think you were looking at Zoom just because David Dave Wilson talked yes, about it. We I, I, that chart of the day. Yeah, it's down, a little bit lower. Um, they did come out. There's a story that we have on the terminal uh, by Nico Grant uh, saying that Zoom is going to offer full end-to-end encryption to all users, free and paid, succumbing to pressure from members of Congress and the public who pushed the video conferencing company to bolster privacy. That was a big concern. We talked with the uh, the CEO and founder. Yeah, about and that. he owned it. I mean, and he I totally think they did. have they have respect. gone to. Uh, to great lengths to to take care of that, but it, it almost feels like the first of all, the market ended up being down overall or, or mixed, uh, certainly down the S and P and the Dow. And you know, this is a name where people are like, oh yeah, they did have those problems. Maybe I don't want this to be more than GE. It's also had a tremendous run. Let's not yeah. forget that. I mean, you know, when Dave talked about, as somebody emailed him, uh, the current PE is one thousand three hundred four. Yeah. So price to earnings, it's pretty well, pretty versus pricey. GE, Stable. which is what he said fifteen. Oh, yeah, it was like <laughs> exactly. It was a, a a teen number. All right, let's do the VIX uh, volatility. Of course, uh, the market is moving around a bit, but uh, volatility uh, very very light. Uh, the VIX down 03 percent, closing at thirty three fifty seven. This is Bloomberg. All right, Dave, you're up. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Dave. Wilson, where are you? Wilson! Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? We're going for a price on Wilson. Open up the door, it's Dave. Who? Dave. Hey, Mr. Wilson. Hey, Mr. Wilson, back with us. Dave Wilson with your stock of the day. What you got? 
I've got Core Civic, Jason. It's an owner and operator of prisons and immigrant detention centers. The company was founded in 1983 and went public in 1997 as Corrections Corp of America. The name was changed in 2016, though the ticker stayed the same, CXW. Core Civic's shares peaked in 2015. They fell that year and every year since then as political activism led many investors and banks to shun the industry. In March, the shares set an 11-year low. Core Civic has been up and down since then, and today was a down day. The company said it would look at, quote, corporate structure and capital allocation alternatives. That's coming from a statement. This calls into question its future as a real estate investment trust, a status it's held since 2013. Now, Core Civic suspended its dividend in light of the review. The company had made payouts since becoming a REIT. At the stock's low in March, the dividend yield was more than 20%, which signaled some kind of a change was coming. All this sent Core Civic shares to their biggest loss in three months. They dropped about 17%. By the way, shares of another prison REIT, Geo Group, they were down 7.8%. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, we were talking to Justin Fox the other day about sort of the incarceration system and the private uh, yeah. prisons are a relatively small part, but a very profitable part. And so kind of remember when people there. were touting it, like this is a great investment because you know what, there's always going to be demand. And like, you know, when you start to think about that, you're like, okay, well, maybe there's something broken with the system that yeah. there's always going to be more and more demand. Maybe it just doesn't work. All right, Dave Wilson, thank you so much. Uh, a really thoughtful day. And we keep quoting your chart of the day because we just love it, that com- comparison between the market cap of GE and Zoom. Good stuff always from Dave Wilson. Jason? All right, let's get out to San Francisco. Ed Baxter is there for World and National News. Hey, Ed. Hey, Jason. Hey, Carol. Uh, this just breaking now in the past couple of minutes. Prosecutor in Atlanta has announced that felony murder is among the charges filed against the officer allegedly fatally shooting Rashard Brooks in the Wendy's parking lot. Uh, The other officer on scene is facing aggravated assault charges. So again, felony murder will be among the charges uh, in Atlanta. Uh, We'll keep you up to date with that. John Bolton and Donald Trump head-to-head in book battle. Uh, We've reported the White House has gone to court to to stop the publication on Monday, but there are excerpts out today. First, White House spokeswoman Kaylee McEnany. Uh, To have highly classified information from the government of the United States um, in a book that will be published, it's unacceptable. Or maybe embarrassing, the excerpts obtained by the New York Times say that the president asked China's president, Xi Jinping, to buy agricultural products from states that would help him win this year's election. Bolton says he was pleading, the president was pleading with Xi to ensure he'd win. Bolton also says congressional investigation shouldn't have stopped at Ukraine. New York will be able to move into reopening stage two as early as Monday. Our number of hospitalizations, lowest level since we started, amen, 1,400. Number of deaths, 17 deaths in the state of New York. And Governor Andrew Cuomo says they are still worried about effects of the protests and the spread. They'll know more by the weekend, but it could very well be Monday. Fingers crossed. In San Francisco, I'm Ed Baxter. This is Bloomberg. People love a good story. They like it even better when that story is real. Is this something strange in the numbers? Paul Sweeney. That seems like a big miss to me. Bonnie Quinn. New funds getting started in order to take advantage of what might be a moment. Bloomberg Markets. Weekday mornings at 10 Eastern. If Russia does throw this spanner in the works, what does it do to relations going forward? On Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business app, and BloombergRadio.com. How important is that statement there? Bloomberg, the world is listening. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. At age 30, Carissa finished her high school diploma. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, you can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. 
in-depth analysis, concise reporting, need-to-know global business news. Around the world and across the markets, Bloomberg connects the dots for decision makers. Stay on top of today's headlines. Follow big breakthroughs in tech. Understand the latest political issues. See how the world's wealthiest are spending their money. Track what's happening in the markets and much more. Subscribe today to Bloomberg, the global standard for business reporting. Get it all at Bloomberg.com slash subscriptions. You know your body, and you know when something's off, when something doesn't feel quite right. Don't ignore symptoms like fatigue, joint pain, rashes, and fever. They could be signs of lupus. Listen to your body. Take care of yourself. We're here to help you take control of your health. Learn how at BeFierceTakeControl.org. Brought to you by the Lupus Foundation of America and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The best of Bloomberg. This is a message from the government about the next stage of controlling coronavirus with NHS Test and Trace. To protect your friends and family, testing and tracing must become a new way of life. If you have symptoms, you need to get a test immediately. Don't leave home for any other reason. If you test positive, we will contact you to trace people who you might have infected. From now on, if you're told you've been exposed to an infected person, you must self-isolate for 14 days. Play your part and do the right thing so we can safely return to a more normal life. Go to nhs.uk or call 119. Stay alert. Control the virus. Save lives. I was offered one. I was offered one. Who are you? Yeah, I was offered one who? One, two, one, two. I was offered one. I was offered one. Don't take our word for it. Nine out of ten people said they were offered a great value deal with O2. Get yours today, in-store, online, or by phone. I was offered one too. O2 Retail Exit Survey 309 of 348 agreed with the statement. O2 offered me a great value deal. For full verification, see o2.co.uk forward slash terms. What if the world listened more? Maybe it could become a better place. Because when we really listen, we start to notice things. Things that don't sound quite bright. They might not seem obvious at first... But listen closely and they stand out like a sore plum. And the more we glisten, the door we learn. Our ears help us find belter solutions. And things can change from this to something a little more like this. The new Honda Jazz is a hybrid. Honda, the power of dreams. If you want to find out what the best laptop is for streaming all your favorite box sets back to back while sitting in your garden, you could ask an algorithm, or someone called Al, or Sue, or Sanjay, or one of our other tech experts on Shop Live, Curry's PC World's online video call experience. Hi, you're talking to Ali on Shop Live. Isn't it nice to get advice from another human being? They're just a click away. Curry's PC World. Talk to our tech experts online with Shop Live. The IBM Flash storage solution could be broken down into three S's. Speed, retrieve data fast. Scalability, grow your storage as your business grows. Simplicity, easily migrate and integrate with existing systems. Oh, and there's a fourth. It's surprisingly affordable, with a recommended monthly price of £200 for 26 terabytes. Order by the 30th of June and pay nothing for 90 days. Visit ibm.biz slash flash offer now. Picture this. Small businesses on eBay are working to... Get things moving. Sending spices to novice cooks. Air bands to kids. Desks for home offices. Delivering the goods. Shipping footballs. Fruit trees. And dishwashers. Thousands of small businesses on eBay are helping to keep the nation going. They are individually brilliant, stronger as one. Buy, sell, eBay. Get your cook on with Asta. With Uncle Ben's rice, 250 grams for just £1. And our butcher's selection chicken breast fillets, only £3.40 for 650 grams. Why not whack it in the wok? At Asta, we're committed to low prices every day on the quality products you need. Asta. Selected stores and lines subject to availability. First, we're told that masks don't work. Then, we're told to wear them all the time. One week, we hear that the mortality rate is 2%. The next, well, who knows? 
In the time of COVID-19, there is so much uncertainty and so much scientists are learning in real time along with the rest of the world. So it's hard to know what you can be sure of and what's still a big question mark. Enter Podcast 19 from 538, where we'll explore the evidence behind the science in our fight against coronavirus. I'm science journalist Anna Rothschild. Each week, I'll investigate coronavirus mysteries, keep track of the latest developments on vaccines and treatments. Oh, and I'll try to edit out all the times I shush my family since I'm recording this thing from the chaos of my home. Search Podcast 19 to listen today. Today at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business App, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. A move lower today for the U.S. stock market down for the first time in four days as worrying increases in coronavirus cases overtook optimism about stimulus measures. The S&P 500 index swung between gains and losses for most of the day before turning lower late in the day, energy, real estate, financial sectors leading today's declines. As S&P down 11, a drop there of four-tenths of one percent. The Dow down 170, down 0.7 percent. NASDAQ up 14, a gain of about two-tenths of one percent. Tenure up 7.30 seconds with a yield of 0.72 percent. Gold up one-tenth of one percent, 17.28 the ounce. West Texas Intermediate crude down 1.6 percent, 37.75 a barrel. Recapping equities mixed, S&P lower, down 11, down four-tenths of one percent. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie, thank you so much. Well, we've been very fortunate, Carol, to catch up with some leaders of major universities across the country of late. And the latest installment in that conversation ongoing is Gary Miller. He's president of the University of Akron, joining us on the phone from Akron. Uh, President Miller, really nice to have you with us. Great to be here. Well, uh, I have an affinity for your school. We have a good friend, uh, Carol and I do, Joe Reese, uh, who's a proud alum. I know he's listening uh, right now, so go Zips. And Lisa Sable uh, is an old friend uh, as well who works on your team. So really delighted. I, I've had a chance to visit your campus uh, a few years ago. I mean, tell us a little bit about uh, the university because where it is and the community that it serves, I think, is really important to understand. Yeah, the uh, University of Akron is an urban research university and right in downtown Akron, which, uh, as you probably know, is a legacy uh, city in America, a long history of uh, manufacturing um, the tire and rubber capital of the world, and uh, and really is representative of a lot of uh, what's happened in American cities in middle America in the last, uh, since the early 2000s. So what's it like now? I mean, what what is the feel on the ground? Because every time we talk to someone, especially out of our outside of our little bubble, President Miller, we want to know like what what is it like, and you know, both in in terms of uh, you know the the both of the crises that I guess uh, we're going through. Just been a yeah, heavy, you know, it's I, just been a heavy three months and a, and a heavy then three weeks on top of it. Yeah, one of the things we were talking to our board about last week was. Uh, you know, even though we've had we have a heavy lift with the uh, with coming through the COVID thing, this is a real uh, historic moment in America around race uh, relations, and um, there's been a lot of emphasis on that and uh, thought about that uh, in Akron. A lot of community conversations. We've had protests, uh, uh, almost all peaceful, and the university, of course, is gearing up to think about this uh, in in many different ways, including with uh, an action group that students formed and and community conversations that we're um, uh, focused on. And then, you know, we've got to examine ourselves, too. We're going to announce a task force next week to look at our practices and policies around, you know, unconscious bias and uh, and, and the way we um, assemble a nurturing and inclusive environment. What's interesting to hear you say that, and, and forgive me, because I, I think we're all trying to figure this out. This is not a new dilemma, you know, we've been talking about, as as many of our guests have come on and said, you know, racism, it's been around for 400 years in right. America, and yet there's a lot of discussions. Um, but what do you think are concrete steps that need to be taken? I mean, you've been in academia for a long time. You were chancellor of the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. You were at Wichita State University um, and more. And I just do wonder, what are the 
practices and policies, the real actions that make a difference and that help erase racism in our country? We're, uh, you know, higher, public higher education should be in the business of providing opportunities. And I think educational opportunities is uh, what we do best, and uh, we're focused on that. I think in a city like Akron, where we have 30% of the population is African American, 40 some percent of the school district. You know, we've got to be about understanding the dynamics of those families, understanding how we can work with our community leaders uh, to get um, uh, get these students uh, opportunities for higher education. And, and we know the jobs of the future are going to require it. We know the jobs in the Akron area are going to require it. So that's what we're focused on. But I do think there's a bigger role for our universities. We are often... Um, uh, the honest broker in the community, uh, we can convene people. Uh, we have incredible faculty expertise around many issues uh, related to uh, uh, systemic racism. We need to deploy those better. And in some cases, I think we even have to contribute uh, some of our resources to making uh, our communities better. Is it fair to say, uh, President Miller, that students are uh, impatient? Uh, I, I feel like, you know, Carol and I both have teenagers, and one of the things I think we've sensed from them, maybe in a, in a, in a way that we haven't seen in several generations, is a sense of urgency. I wonder what you're hearing from your students, knowing that they're not on campus now, but I know you're in touch with them. Right, we are. Uh, they are impatient, but they're incredibly thoughtful, too. Um, I, I think... Um, my sense in our students, we have very thoughtful students. About 70% of them work. Uh, the, uh, most of them come from middle or lower income families. They have uh, real experience, and they're very thoughtful about the problem, but they are impatient. They do want action, and um, we, should, uh, we should take a, a key from that and, uh, and work toward action. Well, go ahead, Carol. No, no, no. No, no, no. Go ahead, Jason. Well, I was just going to say, we, we want to talk a little bit more about coming back. We're, we're going to do some news in a second, but just in the next 30 or 40 seconds, what's the one thing you're most focused on in terms of getting uh, kids back on campus in the fall? So we want them to be safe, uh, and we want them to have uh, campus experience. Uh, we've learned a lot about education and a lot about technology, and we've also learned that uh, you know, we're a high-density organization that uh, thrives on interaction, and yeah. uh, we have to figure that out. Yeah, right. that's, a, that's the thing I feel like so much in the world of higher education. It's it's not an easy thing, and so much of the experience in the education is being there on site. We're going to continue with Gary Miller. He's the 18th president of the University of Akron. He took the job just last October, Jason. So maybe we can talk a little bit, too, about taking the job and certainly not the year or not what he expected to be in his year. first year on the job. So we'll continue that. And I want to hear a little bit more about those plans for the fall and also the financial pressures on yeah. the university. We've been talking about that a lot with uh, Janet Lauren of Bloomberg News who follows uh, universities. So we'll, we'll bring him back and continue that conversation. Yeah, and, and I do think it's important to, to think about it for, through the lens of a public university too. It reminds me of the conversation we had yeah. with Joe Gable over at University of Minnesota. It's a different remit. Uh, they're serving yes. a different audience and I think you know, uh, Dr. Miller, President Miller uh, described it well in terms of who their constituency is because that changes the equation makes it that much more important. We're in continuous do this in just a minute. In the meantime, this is Bloomberg Business Week. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Stocks closed lower for the first time in four days on worries about increases in coronavirus infections. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 170. The S&P 500 lost 11. The Nasdaq gained 14. Hertz plan to sell $500 million in stock is on hold. The company suspended the offering pending an SEC review. Hertz, which is in Chapter 11, has warned repeatedly that the shares could wind up worthless. Fed Chair Jay Powell is urging Congress not to pull back too soon on relief to households and small businesses. In testimony before a House panel, Powell said the economy is at a critical phase and that support would be well-placed. Aunt Jemima is out. Uncle Ben and Mrs. Butterworth may soon follow amid protests for racial justice. PepsiCo will rebrand its Aunt Jemima breakfast products. Mars says it's evaluating Uncle Ben's rice. ConAgra says it's reviewing Mrs. Butterworth's syrup. Larry Kofsky, Bloomberg Radio. The possibility of lung cancer can be pretty scary, especially if you're one of approximately 8 million current or former smokers at high risk. 
That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know that now there's a breakthrough low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early, and it only takes 60 seconds. You stop smoking. Now start screening. For an easy quiz to see if you're eligible, visit SaveByTheScan.org. It could save your life. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. If knowledge is power, the Bloomberg Terminal is your power up. Connecting you to real-time financial data, market-moving news, powerful analytics, and an influential network of financial decision makers around the world. Share ideas, negotiate trades, and gain the insight you need to make more informed decisions. See how the terminal can take your workflow to the next level at Bloomberg.com slash professional. How long? And action. I was offered one. Cut. That's not on the script. I was offered one. Get you. Ladies and gentlemen, I was offered one. Come boy, I was offered one. Don't say can't work for it. Nine out of ten people said they were offered a great value deal with O2. Get yours today, in store, online, or by phone. I was offered one too. O2 Retail Exit Survey 309 of 348 agreed with the statement O2 offered me a great value deal. For full verification, see o2.co.uk forward slash terms. At Honda, we've never looked to other car companies for inspiration. No, it's not a matter of an inflated ego. We just prefer listening to what people really need. For example, the new Honda Jazz Hybrid doesn't have the expected six airbags. It has ten, including one that prevents the driver and passenger from colliding with each other. And because we also listen to our conscience, all our safety features come as standard. No charge. Honda, the power of dreams. If you want to find out what the best laptop is for streaming all your favorite box sets back-to-back while sitting in your garden, you could ask an algorithm, or someone called Al, or Sue, or Sanjay, or one of our other tech experts on Shop Live, Curry's PC World's online video call experience. Hi, you're talking to Ali on Shop Live. Isn't it nice to get advice from another human being? They're just a click away. Curry's PC World. Talk to our tech experts online with Shop Live. The IBM Flash storage solution could be broken down into three S's. Speed. Retrieve data fast. Scalability. Grow your storage as your business grows. Simplicity. Easily migrate and integrate with existing systems. Oh, and there's a fourth. It's surprisingly affordable. With a recommended monthly price of £200 for 26 terabytes. Order by the 30th of June and pay nothing for 90 days. Visit ibm.biz slash flash offer now. TfL has a plan to help London reopen carefully, safely and sustainably. You can do your bit by continuing to work from home if you can and avoiding public transport. If you have to use public transport, you must now wear a face covering at all times, avoid peak hours and wash your hands before and after travel. For everyone's safety, we regularly clean our services with antiviral disinfectant and we'll be providing hand sanitizer across our network. For more information, search TfL's restart plan. To the Mayor of London and TfL, every journey matters. Trey Wingo here from ESPN's Golic and Wingo. Every morning, Mike Golic, Mike Golic Jr. and I sit down to discuss all the news, drama, and highlights spinning the sports world that day. And with TuneIn, you can hear us whenever and wherever you go. Just search Golic and Wingo to start listening today. Stay close to College Hoops Conversation with College Basketball Talk podcast from NBC Sports. Join Rob Dowster and Bobby Reagan for weekly recaps of what's happening in every conference. Nostalgic flashbacks to classic games. And big picture discussions of the future of the sport. Always knew was a legend, and you always knew was one of the great coaches because everyone always told you how great this coach was. But he never really reached point of either. Search College Basketball Talk on TuneIn to listen. Live to New York, Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 991. To Boston, Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco, Bloomberg 960. To the country, Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe, the Bloomberg Business app and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Business Week. Straight ahead, we're going to continue our conversation with President Gary Miller from University of Akron. Looking forward to talking to him about reopening and what it takes. I think it's one of the toughest spots to be in right now in terms of if you run a college or university because you've got a lot of constituents. You're trying to make everybody happy, and it's not an easy one. All right, let's get back to your top business stories. Once again, here is Charlie Powell. All right. I thank you very much, Carol Messer. Thank you, Jason. We've got the Dow, the S&P lower. NASDAQ did advance today. It was a mixed Wednesday. Stock swinging between gains and 
losses. S&P spent much of the day on the plus side in the end, though. An 11-point loss, down four-tenths of one percent. NASDAQ managed to hold on to a 14-point gain, up by just about one-tenth of one percent. The Dow down 170 for the Dow. That was a drop today of about uh, 0.65 percent. Certainly, the ongoing uh, concerns about the spread of the virus, one factor today, also the Bolton book that weighed on investors. The 10-year down point, uh, or the 10-year yield, I should say, 0.72 percent. It was down 7.30 seconds. Gold up $1.43 the ounce, up one-tenth of one percent, 17.27. West Texas Intermediate Crude down 1.7 percent, 37.74 for a barrel of West Texas Intermediate Crude. Now, as for markets in the economic backdrop, Jill Carey Hall is director of U.S. Equity Strategy at Bank of America Securities. There's no question the payrolls number, the retail sales have been strong recently, but we're not expecting this initial V off the bottom to persist. And I think you'd want to see, uh, you know, a little bit more confidence in the sustainability of the recovery. Um, but but we do see risks that this is more more of a U shape. And even if we see the initial V off the bottom. West Texas Intermediate Crude again down 1.7% today. Saudi Arabia, the world's biggest oil exporter, is hitting the brakes on developing some of its crude and natural gas deposits, idling two offshore drilling rigs as the coronavirus batters energy use. Among some of the big well-known energy names today, ExxonMobil, for example, down 3.3%. BP was down 3.5%. EOG Resources lower by 3.9%. And Pioneer Natural Resources down by 2.9%. Recapping, S&P down 11, down four-tenths of 1%. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie, appreciate that update. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week. Carol Masser, Jason Kelly, and our guest at this hour is Gary Miller, president of the University of Akron, who, as we mentioned, or I don't know if we did, we talked to it, I think, after uh, we started our discussion He took this job last October. President Miller is still on the phone with us from Akron, Ohio. I have to say, President Miller, this was not exactly how you expected your first year in the job to go. I'm just guessing. (laughs) No, it's not. (laughs) But uh, I'm not alone. (laughs) No, you're not. I think it's a really tricky spot to be. Tell us, though, about the financial pressures that you are feeling uh, on yourself, really, and, and on the university right now. Yeah, it's interesting. This uh, this virus really has stressed every dimension of the business model for public higher education, uh, and all of our revenue uh, streams were badly hit. Um, and you know we're uh, we're looking at about a sixty five million dollar uh, uh, challenge for next uh, fiscal year, and we're working pretty hard to uh, to uh, get that uh, figured out. Uh, we did do some real interesting things fast, though. We were able to reorganize the institution very quickly uh, from 11 colleges to five, which I think gives us a much more nimble administration. We still have all of our programs, but they're in um, closer proximity with the related programs and less administrative costs. The faculty here did that in a month and a half, which I think must be a world record That's for amazing. reorganization in higher education. Uh, have you been able to hold on to everybody in terms of your staff? We will not be able to. We're still working through that. Uh, mm-hmm. and we're in negotiations now with our union about that. But it's a tough time. It's a, it's a tough time. And so how does, in the short term, the experience change? And again, we're asking this question in part as, as parents, but on behalf of lots of parents out there and, candidly, some you know precocious college students who listen to this uh, radio show to you know be smart about business, I'm sure. Um, you know, wh- what can folks expect when they show up to Akron this fall? This is really interesting, and a lot of us don't know. <laughs> um, you know, we'll be working in a low-density environment with 20,000 students. Um, they will be taking classes, almost all of which will be hybrid uh, in some form or another. Um, uh, campus activities will be very different. We're having to, to really emphasize, uh, you know, personal health and uh, masks, and uh, we're still um, trying to understand the kind of testing regime you'll put in. There are a lot of things the universities do, like studios and athletics and dance and the band and the uh, that just can't be done in low density normally, and we're trying to figure that out. And of course, you know these are uh, these are young adults, and um, they have minds of their own, uh, so they will be out in the community. We're working very closely with uh, our local health department, local community hospitals, and uh, we do expect you know to have some cases on campus. So we're ready to uh, take care of those quarantine and 
test and uh, trace if we need to. It'll be very different. We'll learn a lot. We're, one of the things we're doing is getting groups of students together to talk to us during the semester so that we can make adjustments as we go along. Interesting. So, so if they have, so yeah. we're trying to do some real-time adjusting here. If they have complaints about the way we're doing it, we want them to be innovative. I always tell freshmen, make sure you change us before you leave. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so we're going to give them a real, uh, a real opportunity this fall to, uh, to help us figure it out. Well, and I have to think your surrounding community, right? Because a college or university, it's about the college community, university community, but it's also the surrounding community, right? There's small businesses. There's a lot of things that, you know, are, you know, rely on you as well. Oh, it's a codependency in Akron. We're, we're 150 years old in this city. Yeah. And, uh, we uh, we can't imagine uh, being here without Akron, and the city can't imagine being here without us. And so we that's true. We work very closely together. And so, you know, it, it's interesting. I, I also wonder how much you have to coordinate with other schools across Ohio. I mean, is that the coordination you have to have? Is, is it regional? Is it local? Like, who who has to be sort of all on the same page, Dr. Miller? It's a great uh, uh, coordinating effort across Ohio. We have a interuniversity council. We talk, um, our groups talk virtually every week. And the things we're doing are setting up uh, common protocols uh, yeah. for how we're going to phase in, how we're going to test, how we're going to do so that we get, um, so that we can learn from each other and we're all kind of giving everybody the same experience and taking on the same risks. A uh, great group of colleagues in Ohio, I have to tell you. Well, and, you know, some great schools, uh, including yours, uh, across the state. All right. Well, um, hopefully we'll see in some form or another some Zips football uh, this fall. Gary Miller is the president of the University of Akron, joining us on the phone from Akron. Great to get. I I love catching up with college presidents. I do, too. I do, too. And I kind of say, you know, they're under a lot of stress. I think about uh, the president of Ithaca that we talked to, and I, I know someone who's been in the administrative staff there and was talking to them. I mean... It's just not a, an easy place to be, and you're going to make some people unhappy with whatever yeah, decisions you make. Nobody's going to be make. happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, go get them. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> in any case, uh, much more ahead, including part of my conversation with Jim Coulter. In the meantime, let's get out to San Francisco. That's where Jim Coulter was. That's where Ed Baxter is. He's got World National Headlines. Hey, Ed. You got it. Thank you, Jason. Uh, former Atlanta police officer Garrett Rolfe has been charged with a felony murder in the death of Rayshard Brooks. We We concluded and considered it as uh, one of our important considerations that Mr. Brooks never presented himself as a threat. Paul Howard Jr., Fulton County District Attorney, saying if found guilty, Rolf faces either life in prison without parole or the death penalty. New York may be ready to enter phase two reopening as early as Monday. Mayor Bill de Blasio says the medical statistics today say go, but... We're going to see, we believe, the fuller impact, if any, of the protests in terms of our health indicators. Uh, around this weekend, maybe into the first few days of next week. In the state, record low for new cases and hospitalizations for the pandemic period. But there's major concern elsewhere. Arizona's cases spike of hospital capacity. Also concern in Texas and Florida showing some strain as well. Excerpts from John Bolton's book released today by the New York Times say the President Donald Trump pleaded with China's President Xi Jinping to buy agricultural states, a byproduct from them that could help him win the election. He uses the word pleaded. He also says congressional investigation should not have stopped with Ukraine, that there was much more. The White House, well... This book is full of classified information, uh, which is inexcusable. Um, Former National Security Advisor John Bolton should... No better, she says. That's Kaylee McEnany. It is in, in the courts now. We'll see. In San Francisco, I'm Ed Baxter. This is Bloomberg. President of the Jewish Communal Fund, Zoya Rains, and her husband, Robert Friedman, Jewish activists and philanthropists, talk about why they chose the Jewish Communal Fund for their charitable giving. As very busy working parents, we wanted to focus more on the charity part of it and wanted to focus more on our children and less on the administration. The Jewish Communal Fund is one of the oldest and largest donor-advised funds, but at the same time, they are totally up-to-date and have state-of-the-art systems for us to access and manage our contributions online. 
the assets in our fund at the JCF grow tax-free, so we can generate more charitable dollars to support the charities that we care about most. Let JCF minimize your taxes and maximize your charitable giving. We're incredibly passionate about our charity, and the JCF allows us to focus more on the charity and less on the administration and the headaches. For more information about Jewish Communal Fund, visit our website at jcfny.org and request a new fund kit. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. I came out in the 11th grade. Nobody was embracing you. The kids were cruel. It was very difficult to be gay. Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. The hard part was determining that I was going to do it, but I definitely didn't do it alone. At age 30, with the help of her mentor, Carissa finished her high school diploma. I have a mentor, Maria. She convinced me to continue my education and finish what I started to get my diploma. She just never judges. She's a true role model. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, go get it. You can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Are you interested in a challenging... So I often struggled at school. Um, Once, when we had a maths test, I looked around the room and everyone was just doing it. And I couldn't. And I began to cry. But my teacher came over and said, it might look like one big problem, but it's just a handful of small ones. And you can deal with that. I hear her voice in my head for every problem I face to this day. Teaching. Every lesson shapes a life. You could get £26,000 tax-free to train as a teacher. Subject to eligibility, selected subjects only. Search Get Into Teaching. What if the world listened more? Maybe it could become a better place. Because when we really listen, we start to notice things. Things that don't sound quite right. They might not seem obvious at first... But listen closely and they stand out like a sore plum. And the more we glisten, the door we learn. Our ears help us find belter solutions. And things can change from this to something a little more like this. The new Honda Jazz is a hybrid. Honda, the power of dreams. If you want to find out what the best laptop is for streaming all your favourite box sets back-to-back while sitting in your garden, you could ask an algorithm, or someone called Al, or Sue, or Sanjay, or one of our other tech experts on Shop Live, Curry's PC World's online video call experience. Hi, you're talking to Ali on Shop Live. Isn't it nice to get advice from another human being? They're just a click away. Curry's PC World. Talk to our tech experts online with Shop Live. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. You love TuneIn for live-breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on-demand news shows on TuneIn. Stay close to College Hoops Conversation with College Basketball Talk podcast from NBC Sports. Join Rob Dowster and Bobby Reagan for weekly recaps on what's happening in every conference. Nostalgic flashbacks to classic games and big picture discussions of the future of the sport. Always knew was a legend and you always knew was one of the great coaches because everyone always told you how great this coach was. But he never really reached point of either. Search College Basketball Talk on TuneIn to listen. Who says only the experts get to do the talking? On the Scuttlepuck NHL Hockey Podcast, irreverent outsiders Mike Bond and Dale Horde give their untrained opinions on all things hockey from the fans' perspective. I don't know how you get those guys out of there. And Crosby, as great as he's been, it's just such a different era, so it's tough with the... He he didn't have the crazy number of points that Orr, Lemieux, and and Gretzky did. Like, they just... Search Scuttlepuck on TuneIn to listen. 
As the science and medical world continues to learn more about COVID-19, we're all learning how to best live with it. Because the news is always changing, TuneIn helps you make sure you're getting the latest information on the pandemic with live streams of CNN, MSNBC, BBC, and more. Plus, evidence-driven podcasts like Coronavirus, Fact versus Fiction, and Podcast 19. For the latest stories and reports, search Coronavirus News on TuneIn. This is Mike Golick from ESPN's Golick and Wingo. Every morning, Trey Wingo, my son, and I sit down to discuss all the news, drama, and highlights spinning the sports world that day. And with TuneIn, you can hear us whenever and wherever you go. Just search Golick and Wingo to start listening today. Today at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet, developing story out of Google. Alphabet's Google says it will try to improve the number of black workers in senior roles and set a goal of filing at least or filling at least 30 percent of leadership positions with employees from underrepresented groups by 2025 search giant also says it's going to be hiring more people in atlanta washington chicago and london it was a mixed day for the u.s stock market today stocks did move lower for the first time in four days as worrying increases in coronavirus cases overtook optimism about stimulus measures the s p 500 index End of the session lower by 11 points, down by about four tenths of one percent. The Dow down 170, down seven tenths of one percent. Nasdaq held on to a 14 point gain, up by about two tenths of one percent. Tenure up 6.30 seconds, yield 0.73 percent. Gold up one tenth of one percent, 17.27 the ounce. And crude lower by 1.7 percent, 37.74 a barrel. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie, thank you so much. Well, you know how I kind of love it when I get these harebrained schemes and then it all kind of comes together? Yeah. It all comes <laughs> So that happened today. So uh, tell me, tell me. So Jim Coulter, you know, he and I do this little thing every year at our CEO conference the year ahead, which you and I co-host. Right. And I love getting up on stage with him, although actually, like, I'm in the audience, Phil Donahue style. I'm asking him questions. He's taking us through the, the year ahead. Phil Donahue. Everybody like, gets a call. No, Half of our that. audience is like, who's Phil Donahue? Yeah. Anyway, has better hair than so I do. scary. In any case. Yes, he does. Um, so Jim very nicely agreed to basically reboot his year ahead conversation because, well, a lot has changed uh, in the world. Protests, corporate conversations, talking about racial injustice, obviously COVID-19 as well. Right. We started off by talking about the outlook for equality. This was part of our year ahead revisited. Check it out. Let's start, if we can, on this question of racial justice, because I know it's something you've thought about, and I know that TPG is talking about, and that you're talking to that huge uh, uh, sort of Rolodex, or not even Rolodex, but you know the partners that you have around the world. Uh, a lot has changed since we were together in November. A number of the trends we're talking about, the rise of subscription businesses, corporate responsibility are continuing apace. But clearly, when the history of the year is written, it'll be about two issues that have shaped the first half of the year. And I think those two issues are likely to drive the year ahead. The coronavirus, uh, we're all beginning to build our understanding on. But much more recent is the racial justice movement. And quite frankly, um, I hesitated to talk about it today. It still feels early. It still feels like a moment that we're all dealing with the pain of, of the murders of uh, Rayshard Brooks, Maude Aubrey, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. And we're still in the middle of, I think, a societal and, and personal journey, particularly for people like you and I, uh, Jason, who have uh, had the privilege of growing up in a country as a white male. But I knew you'd ask. Uh, you're a reporter. So let me just share a few early thoughts about where I think we are and how it might shape the year ahead. Uh, there are many, many words that we could use, but I think it, it may be best just to start with pictures. Um, it feels different this time, 3,500 cities of protests. And if you go into these pictures, you see a racially diverse group of people engaged in it. Only two years ago, 40% of people were backing the Black Lives Matter movement. Today, uh, seven out of 10 white Americans say that racial injustice is a major problem for the country. Uh, these protesters were not deterred by a global pandemic. They were not deterred by tear gas in Washington, tornadoes in Florida. And the depth 
and breadth of what we're seeing, I think, speaks well to how it will shape the world ahead. And one of the pictures, quite frankly, that really impacted me was this is no longer just a U.S. issue. Uh, it's an issue that has grabbed the global attention, both reflecting upon the U.S. and reflecting on broader issues within the world. So as I look at where we've traveled so far and the world ahead, I think we're in the midst of a social and political revolution that's likely to be expressed in many ways. The question we also have to engage on is, will it be expressed in the business and investment world? And here, I think uh, I'm, I'm beginning to see a birth of a bit of optimism and a bit of action that I'm, I have to say I, I wasn't expecting to see as fast, and I'm gratified to see that it is moving. Let me just touch on a little bit of that. Uh, one of the cultural bellwethers I always look to, Jason, are the sports uh, uh, teams and Hollywood. And uh, sometimes they give you a sense of how the world is going to engage in an issue. And here the news is, frankly, nothing short of gratifying and amazing. The NFL, which was only 2016 that Colin Kaepernick took a knee. Think about what's happened since then. And in a immediate 180, it's moved to the right side of this issue. The idea that NASCAR would ban the Confederate flag from its events is uh, was a distant thought not too long ago. And one of the things I love, if you look at the announcement here, Jason, the presence of the Confederate flag, small C, Confederate. Traditionally, it's been large C, delegating not only the flag, but the Confederacy to the place it belongs to go. And uh, the Premier League, perhaps the most coveted advertising space in sports is Premier League jersey. What's on there now? Black Lives Matter. So we're beginning to see the early signs of engagement through some of the cultural icons of the world. But the question is, is it going to spread? And here again, uh, cautious green shoots. Three points I'd make. First of all, we have a little bit of an inside view of this because we own a company called Everfi, which is the number one producer of software on everything from DNI training to allyship uh, to unconscious bias. They also produce software that is resetting the teaching of uh, African American history. And, and when we look inside that company, I was talking to the CEO over the weekend, we are seeing a doubling and tripling of inquiries from companies. So companies are understanding they can't just speak externally about this. They need to get their own house in order. So first of all, we're seeing early evidence of companies changing their internal practices. Second, companies are stepping forward in a public way and they're stepping forward with their pocketbook. Uh, Fortune 100 has already, according to Axios, done a billion six of pledges led by Bank of America. And so we're seeing engagement at a level we haven't seen before. And the third area, and this is in some ways, I think the most important, is our business is really going to change their business practices to reflect this. And again, early green shoots, uh, the 15% pledge, the idea of putting 15% of your shelf space uh, into African-American uh, brands and companies. Amazon, Microsoft, and IBM have stopped selling facial recognition software Estee Lauder is changing their hiring practices and committing to reflect the world makeup in their uh, in their workforce, not just their historical makeup by 2025. And even this morning, Pepsi pulling the Aunt Jemima brand. Uh, we're beginning to see actions on the business practices side that will strengthen the movement. And the third thing I would point out is yet to be seen, but again, I'm hopeful, is will consumers engage? Because if we can get society to engage, businesses to engage, and consumers to engage, it'll build the foundation of what's happening here. All right, and that is just part of my conversation with Jim Coulter, co-CEO, co-founder of TPG. Uh, I, I will say one of the most thoughtful investors out there. Uh, can I re-say my favorite line from the whole thing? Please. I asked him personally what he was doing, and he talked about some of the things he was reading and watching, and he said, here's what it comes down to, less Tiger King, more Dr. King. I love that. Perfect. Like, just let it sit with you. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah. And I have to say what he said about, you know, committing 15% of your shelves and stuff. Like, money talks. We keep saying yeah. it. We keep saying it. All right. We do have to remind everybody, if you're listening in New York and San Francisco, watching on YouTube, Bloomberg Business Week, we continue. If you're listening on Bloomberg, not anyone in D.C., sign on with Kevin Cerulli is next. More of Mr. Coulter. You can catch that on our weekend show, so be sure to check that out. This is Bloomberg Radio. Business is like a puzzle. Listen, that's a dream. Everyone has them, jingling away in the back of our minds. And most of the time, that's where dreams stay. So easy to ignore. Anything can drown them out and everything does. But at Honda, we listen to our dreams. We get right up close. And on really good days become reality from 2022 honda's mainstream cars will only be hybrid or electric honda the power of dreams tfl has a plan to help london reopen carefully safely and sustainably we're temporarily changing when 60 plus london oyster photo cards older person's freedom passes and english national concession scheme passes can be used from the 15th of june you will only be able to use these passes from 9 a.m on weekday mornings This is to protect those who must travel in the morning peak and allows you to travel at times when you can safely social distance from others. For more information, search TfL Restart Plan. To the Mayor of London and TfL, every journey matters. With millions of podcasts dropping new episodes all the time, how do you keep up with all your favorites? TuneIn makes it easy. Simply head to the home screen and find your new episode section to see the latest additions. You love tune in for live breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on demand news shows on tune in. Stay close to College Hoops Conversation with College Basketball Talk Podcast from NBC Sports. Join Rob Dowster and Bobby Reagan for weekly recaps of what's happening in every conference. Nostalgic flashbacks to classic games. A big picture discussions of the future of the sport. You always knew was a legend, and you always knew was one of the great coaches because everyone always told you how great this coach was. But he never really reached point of either. Search College Basketball Talk on TuneIn to listen. To help keep you and your loved ones safe, TuneIn has the latest guidelines from the CDC. CDC says there are still precautions to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Wash hands often for 20 seconds and encourage others to do the same. Use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol if no soap or water is available. For the latest stories and updates on COVID-19, search Coronavirus News on TuneIn. Four hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. It was a mixed day on Wall Street. Stocks fell for the first time in four days as worrying increases in coronavirus cases overtook optimism about stimulus measures. Treasury note yields fell. The dollar was little changed. S&P 500 index down 11, a drop of four tenths of one percent. The Dow down 170, down seven tenths of one percent. Nasdaq up 14, that was a gain of about two tenths of one percent. Tenure up 430 seconds with a yield of 0.73%. So a mixed day on Wall Street. Alphabet's Google says it will try to improve the number of black workers in senior roles and set a goal of filling at least 30% of leadership positions with employees from underrepresented groups by the year 2025. Now as for the Federal Reserve and the economic backdrop, Priya Misra is head of rates strategy at TD Securities USA. We've had unprecedented stimulus, and so and the and the world is reopening. The U.S. is reopening. You're going to get this better data. I think they're going to become the elephant in the room then to prevent rates from rising because they seem to be a lot more worried about the structural damage that COVID might have uh, caused to the economy. So they just don't want rates, at least Treasury rates, rising. 
And again, the 10-year, the yield there, 0.73%. Gold down 6 cents, 1726 the ounce. Little changed. We've got West Texas Intermediate Crude down 1.8%, 37.70 a barrel. Wells Fargo CEO Charlie Scharf, who vowed last month to do more to improve diversity within the firm's ranks, is tying executives' pay to their progress in doing so. Wells Fargo shares today, uh, they did decline by 3.75%. So again, recapping turned out to be a mixed day on Wall Street. Both the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, and uh, the S&P 500 Index declined. NASDAQ did advance. Texas virus cases jumped 3.4%, surpassing the seven-day average of 2.7%. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week with Carol Mazur and Jason Kelly on Bloomberg Radio. I jumped the gun because I'm kind of eager to get to our next guest, so forgive me, everybody. No one heard you. I could just see oh, you jumping you? the gun. I know. I just, we have good engineers who just know to keep you down until the music plays. That gray matter, it just, know. you know, the synapses aren't Seeks firing. In. Yeah, I know. So Everett Sands is the founder and CEO of Lendistry. It's a fintech company. It's also one of the largest community development financial institutions. It focuses on lending to very very small businesses, especially those owned by minorities, women, and veterans. Those are certainly populations that are, no doubt about it, underserved by the financial community. Everett joins us on the phone from Orange County, California. Everett, thank you so much um, for being with us. We have a lot we want to talk about, um, but I do want to ask you, because we've been reporting on stories a lot in the past few weeks and probably longer about the inequality when it comes to access to our financial system in this country. If you're black, if you're Latino, if you're a woman, your access to capital is harder than if you are a white man. What has been your own experience as an African-American founder and citizen of this country when it comes to tapping into the entrenched financial system? 